Hello everybody. Hey, this is a second follow-up video to the earlier one, but earlier it was about personal things, house, rebuilding, all of that. One year since the fire burned down our house. Um, right now I'd like to talk to you about just a real brief lesson, a real brief message that really came from more like October, November, December of 2019, but may be relevant. Well, I believe wholeheartedly, I believe it's relevant to today. Um, a lot of people in the Christian community and around the, in the Christian world were getting feelings and, you know, thoughts and messages from God, they felt like that, you know, certain things were going to happen and that 2020 was going to be a year where, you know, the, the second place people, the also rans, the, you know, if you've ever been picked last on a football team or the, or the not football team, but on the baseball team or the soccer or the kickball team as a kid, you know, that those people, that it was time for them to step to the front. Um, a lot of people were, and I was included in that, I was getting the feelings, lots of scriptural references, things like that, that somehow that all of you, those of you, those of us, anybody who's been kind of, you felt second place, you felt like, well, you know, I just, my time has never really come, or I've never really been able to step out and make a big impact in life, and I've never really been able to change things, I've never really had the impact I thought I was going to have as a Christian, or, or I've never really been able to really fit in and do what I needed to do, it's always so-and-so doing it, or that big-name guy there, or that big-name person there, you know, things like that. Um, a lot of people felt that way. A lot of people are that way because there's always a lot more Indians than there are chiefs. We all know that. And this feeling was not that people were going to all of a sudden become chiefs. <laughs> we weren't going to lose the Indians. But what it came from was, if you notice, I'll, I'll read the scripture verse to you. In Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, there's a story of Jesus calming the storm and calming the waves on the sea. And this last year, back in old September, October, I read it one day and the interesting thing about that scripture in Mark is, and, and it's also in Matthew 8, 24 through 27, you can read that, and then it's also in Luke 8, 22 to 25. But the cool thing about Mark's, Mark's gospel, and, and what he says is that it says that Jesus and the disciples got into the boat, they had just fed the 5,000, I think they had just fed the 5,000, or, or they'd fed a bunch of people, it wasn't the 5,000, but it was another time they'd fed a whole bunch of people. They get into a boat to go across the Sea of Galilee, and it says right there, and there were other boats with them. Okay, that, for some reason, that jumped out at me. And think about it this way. Jesus and the disciples get into a boat. These boats carry 8, 10 people, maybe 12 people, um, sometimes less, sometimes more, perhaps. They're fishing boats. But he gets into a boat, and they start off across the sea. And the waves start roaring, and everything's going crazy. And, you know, and, and, and the disciples are even scared. These are seasoned fishermen, man, and they're scared that they're going to die. They come to him and they shake. He's sleeping in the back of the boat. Jesus has just crashed, man. I guess he's really tired. He's been, he just fed a whole bunch of people. He healed people. He's, he's been burning energy up. He's been loving people, ministering to people, and he's bushed. And he's laying asleep in the back of the boat. They wake him up saying, Master, don't you, don't, don't, aren't you even concerned that we're going to die? And he says, oh, ye of little faith. And he stands up and he calms the storm. He says, be still, peace be still to the storms and the waves, and they all subdue and they call. And in Luke, it says, in Luke 8, 20, chapter 8, it talks about that they were amazed. Even the disciples were just amazed that, my God, who is this man that even the wind and the rain and the storms obey him? And that's one of the coolest scriptures about the power of Jesus and the power of God in his son. But the other thing about it that got me and got a lot of people was this. A lot of times in life, you may be the one right there in the boat with Jesus. You may be the one that's just blowing and going and he's using you and you're ministering to people and you're helping people and you're saving souls and you're just redirecting people from wrecked lives and things are going great. But maybe, just maybe, you're in one of the other boats. And what God told me and what the message I felt like I had really strongly was that, you know, a lot of times there are a lot of people out there in the other boats. They're not right where the action is happening. They're not right in the middle of the oh wow the anointing or the things that are going on that you know the, the great new move of the spirit now or the new thing but they're still faithful and they're still following christ and these those other boats were following christ just like the guys in the boat with him were and he was asleep so it didn't matter but those other boats are at a distance well they were still there and there have always been other boats you guys understand in matthew chapter 28 the people that saw jesus ascend at his ascension when he gave the Great Commission and said, Go ye there into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you know, and pre you know, preach unto all nations. When he gave that message and he ascended into heaven, there were 500 and some odd people there. 
These were people that had been following him all along. The Bible doesn't talk a lot about them. I mean, that's over 475, 80 people. The Bible never, ever mentions their name, does it? But it mentions the disciples' name. So think to yourself for a second. There were a lot of those people that were asked to step up. When Jesus died and rose again and, and, and ascended into heaven, all a lot of those secondary people, you've never heard their names, you may never hear their names till we get to heaven, they stood up. A lot of the people that were in the other boats stand up. Well, you know what? At this time, I think God was saying, and we all believe God is saying, get ready. Because if you've been, if you felt like you were in one of the other boats, you were following, but you were just not there. You felt you needed to be closer to Jesus. You wanted to be in the same boat all the time, right? Um, or you felt like you were one of those followers, but you just, you know, you weren't really being asked to do the big task. Well, right now, in 2020, is the big is the time for us to step up and start doing the tasks. All the people that were second best, all the people that were not even second best, just left out. It's not about being less or being second best than anyone else. It's about being left out and not being in the position to help. Well, now with this coronavirus scare and with all this stuff going on, we're in the position. You're in the position to help no matter who you are. It doesn't take much to go to the store and buy something for somebody who needs it. It doesn't take much to help people. It doesn't take much to email or Zoom or video conference people. It doesn't take much to, you know, go donate money and help people, whatever margin you have in your life to help others. So I would just encourage you, encourage you right now that think of the word that God has for all of us that is let's step up and let's start helping no matter where we think we are. Because right now may be the time that you're called and I'm called this year to step up and make this world a better place. Okay? Amen.